VirtualBox is a powerful x86 and AMD64 and Intel64 virtualization product for enterprise use as well as home use. Not only is VirtualBox an extremely feature-rich, high-performance product for enterprise customers, it is also the only professional solution that is freely available as open source software under the terms of the general public license version 2. To download VirtualBox, open your preferred web browser and navigate to virtualbox.org forward slash WIKI forward slash downloads. Click on the x86 slash AMD64 for Windows hosts or choose the correct option for your operating system. Once the download completes, launch the downloaded installer file to begin the installation. The setup wizard will appear. Click Next to start the installation. The following screen will prompt you to select the installation directory and the features you would like to install. If you would like to install VirtualBox in a location other than the default, which is your C drive, click the Browse to do so. Otherwise, click Next and continue. The next screen will prompt you to choose if you would like VirtualBox icons on your desktop or quick launch bar. This is user preference, but make sure to leave the box checked to register file extensions. Once you've made your selections, click Next. Now you'll be notified that you will lose network connectivity briefly. Make sure that this will not affect anything you're working on and click Yes to move forward. Now click the Install button. The installation will begin. During the installation you will see several pop-ups asking you to install different types of device software. Check the Always Trust Software from Oracle Corporation checkbox and click Install. Once the installation is complete, all you need to do is leave the Start Oracle VM Virtual Box after installation checkbox checked and click finish. That's it for this lecture. Great job getting this installed and I will see you in the next one. Now it's time to download Windows Server 2016. Thankfully Microsoft offers a free trial version for 2016 that anyone can download for evaluation or in our case training purposes. To download Windows Server 2016 open your preferred web browser and navigate to TechNet dot microsoft dot com once the page loads click on the downloads page on the navigation menu you'll see a couple of options for TechNet downloads choose the arrow inside of the Windows Server 2016 box Be sure that you select Windows Server 2016 and not the Windows Server 2016 Technical Preview 5. Before you can download Server 2016, you must sign in. Click on the Sign In button. Once you are brought to the Sign In page, you will either need to log into your existing Microsoft account or you will need to create a new one. You can create a new account by clicking the Create One button at the bottom of the page. Once you successfully logged in, you will be brought back to the Downloads page. Under Windows Server 2016, choose the file type ISO and click Register to continue. Now you will be prompted to enter various personal information such as your name, email address, etc. Enter in all the required information and click Continue. The download will begin and you'll need to wait for the download to finish. Make sure you know where you're downloading the file so you can access it later. Notice the complicated name of the file. It's not named simply Windows Server 2016, so it's important that you make note of this name so you can find it later. That's it for this lecture. Great job, and I will see you in the next one. Now it's time to learn the detailed steps of creating a VM in VirtualBox. The objective of this lecture is to create a virtual machine that we will install and configure to be our first domain controller. A domain controller is a Microsoft server that is responsible for security authentication within a Windows domain. A domain controller can also manage computer and user accounts that are inside of its domains. You can also do things like remotely deploy software to the computers, change a user's desktop background, configure scheduled tasks, manage Windows updates, and much, much more. The first thing we need to do is open VirtualBox. Next, either select the New button in the top left hand corner of the screen or select Machine New. Also, you can press left control and N. The Create Virtual Machine window will appear. Choose the Expert Mode button in the bottom part of the screen and wait for the window to reappear. 
Now you need to enter the VM name, type, version, memory size, and whether or not you want to create a hard disk. I'm going to put the name as Windows Server 2016-DC01. Now this is not actually the computer name, but the name that VirtualBox will use when storing the VM in its inventory. The DC01 part stands for Domain Controller 01, meaning that it's the first domain controller in our environment. Notice that I selected Windows Server 2012 64-bit as the version. This is because VirtualBox has not updated their software to include the latest version of Windows Server, which right now is less than a month old. Do not worry if you only see Windows Server 2012 as the latest option, as it will run the newer OS perfectly fine. Of course, if they have updated the software by now and you have version 2016 available, go ahead and choose 2016. Under the memory size, I'm going to specify 4096 megabytes. I know some of my students have gotten away with using as little as 1 gigabyte of RAM or 1024 megabytes of RAM. And if you have an older or slower computer, you can try this option to see if it'll work. Now my host computer has 16 gigabytes of RAM, so I'm going to go ahead and use 4 gigs for this VM. Remember that later we can change this and lower this number if we'd like. Notice that you cannot allocate more RAM than what your physical system has. So for example, I couldn't set the VM's RAM to 17 gigabytes since my host only has 16 gigabytes. Under hard disk, I'm going to leave create a virtual hard disk now, radio box checked, and I'm going to click create. The next screen is asking us to create the virtual hard disk. The most important thing that we do on this screen is that we drag the file size slider to at least 60 gigabytes. Next, I also recommend that under storage on physical hard disk, you choose dynamically allocated. Let's say we set the file size slider to 60 gigabytes, and under storage on physical hard disk, we choose fixed size. What that means is our hard disk file will always be 60 gigabytes no matter how much data is stored on the hard drive. On the other hand, if we choose dynamically allocated, that means our hard disk file will only go up to 60 gigabytes, but will also remain as small as possible depending on how much data is actually on the virtual hard disk file. Now click create, and now we can see the VM has been created and is listed in our inventory. Now let's learn how to edit the settings of the VM. You may do this by right clicking on the VM and choosing settings, or selecting the VM and pressing left control and S. Now there are a lot of settings here, so I'm just going to point out what I believe are the most important. Under the General tab, select Advanced and change the Shared Clipboard and Drag and Drop to Bidirectional. This will allow you to copy and paste and drag and drop between your host computer and your VM. Be warned, this feature does constantly fail in VirtualBox, but it is extremely convenient when it is actually working. You will also need to install the Guest Editions Virtual Disk before this will work. If you would like to add an additional hard disk file, this can be done under the storage tab by clicking the floppy disk with a plus sign and choosing add hard disk. You may also add additional virtual disk drives, as in CD or DVD drives if required, but that is not necessary for our purposes. To mount an ISO to the default virtual disk drive, select the disk icon that reads empty and choose the disk drop down on the right hand side of the screen and choose virtual optical disk file. Next, you need to navigate and select the ISO you wish to mount. If you have a physical CD that you would like to mount, you can simply select Host Drive instead of Virtual Optical Disk File. The Network tab allows us to configure VM networking adapters as well as add subsequent networking adapters. Notice that the default option is the NAT adapter. This is because a NAT adapter is the easiest to use when getting started. Finally, we have the Shared Folders tab. This allows you to share files from your host computer between your guest VM without a direct network connection. You may create a new shared folder and select a valid path on your host PC. Be sure to choose Auto Mount for convenience if you choose this. You may click OK or Cancel to close this window. And that's all we need to cover in this lecture. You now know how to create a virtual machine and edit its settings. Great job with this lecture and I will see you in the next one. We are ready to install Windows Server 2016 on our VM. First, we need to mount or attach the ISO we downloaded earlier to our VM and then we can launch the VM and begin the installation. Right click on the VM and choose Settings. Select the Storage tab and click on the empty disk icon followed by the disk drop down list on the right hand side of the screen. Select Choose Virtual Optical Disk File. Browse to the Windows Server ISO that we downloaded earlier and select Open. 
Now you will see the ISO is mounted to the VM. Click OK to close the settings window. The next time that we power on the virtual machine, it will boot to the CD and we can begin the installation. To power on the virtual machine, right click on the VM in the inventory and select Start, Normal Start. The VM will now begin to load the Windows installation files. This shouldn't take more than a few minutes. Once the files have loaded, you will be prompted to select your language and keyboard input method. I will select the default options and click Next. On the next screen, choose the Install Now and you will be brought to the OS installation screen. Now, if you've installed Windows Server 2012, right away you're going to notice that unlike Windows Server 2012, there is no option for Server with a GUI or Server Core. Instead, Server with a GUI is now called Desktop Experience. Now, if you do not select one of the Desktop Experience options, then you're going to install what's known as Server Core. Server Core is an advanced option that only allows users to interact with the server on a command line basis. Now, you might ask why would you ever want to install Server Core? And the reason for this is that since there's no graphical user interface, the server is much more lightweight and less resource intensive. Now, unlike in Server 2012, where the data center and standard versions contained the exact same set of features and the only difference was licensing capabilities, this is no longer the case. As before, with the standard edition, you cannot have more than two operating system environments. Also like before, the data center version allows you to install unlimited operating system environments. Now unlike before, the data center version also includes three new features not included with standard. The first feature is in regards to storage, and it includes storage spaces direct and storage replica. The second feature is shielded virtual machines and a host guardian service, which basically means more secure virtual machines with Hyper-V. The third is a new networking stack, which basically means better network performance. This is important for you to know because unlike before where standard and data center were exactly the same, only limiting how many installs and operating system environments you could have, there's actually real differences between standard and data center. For this course, we're going to select the Windows Server 2016 Data Center Evaluation Desktop Experience. On the next screen, accept the licensing agreement and click Next. On the following screen, you'll be prompted for the installation type. If you already have Windows Server 2012 installed, you may choose Upgrade. Upgrades can be nice as they will keep your files and settings intact if possible. However, even Microsoft claims that you should install a fresh or custom install if at all possible. In my experience, I've never had a single upgrade work without having things break later on. Since this is a new VM and we do not have Windows Server 2012 already installed, we have to choose Custom, Install Windows Only, Advanced. On the next screen, you'll be asked to choose where you want to install the operating system. If you have more than one hard disk drive mounted to the VM, then you will see them listed here. Note that it is possible to create partitions, which are subdivisions of your hard disk file, if you like by selecting the drive and choosing the New button and entering the size of the new partition. We have no need to do this, so just click Next and continue the installation. Now the installation of Windows Server 2016 will actually begin. This install generally takes at least 20 minutes, so now is a good time to take a break and wait for the installation to finish. I'm going to speed up this video so that you don't have to sit here for 20 minutes and watch my installation go. If you would like, you can pause this lecture and wait for your installation to finish and then come back to this lecture and resume. The next thing that we're going to do is create a password for the administrator account and then we will be brought to the login screen. Once the installation is complete, you will be prompted to enter the password for the built-in account administrator. It is very important that you don't forget this password, so make sure you write it down if your work policy allows or memorize it and click finish. The computer installation will finish and you will be brought to the login screen. You may log in with the administrator credentials you just created by pressing right control and delete. Enter the new password and press enter. Now you should see the Windows desktop. That's it for this lecture. Great job, and I will see you in the next one.